Welcome to Crystal Waters International Ministries, where we are impacting the world with Christ's love. Today, get set to hear the life-changing living Word of God. As Denise L. Adams teaches the living Word, your life will be impacted and transformed. And now, here's Pastor Denise. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're with me today. This is Uh, Part two of our teaching on Let the Word Drop. This is our prophetic course, our prophetic training. Uh, This is our foundational teaching on the prophetic. It's um, to give you a good base, a good solid founding in God's Word regarding the prophetic. Last week we talked about uh, hearing um, and understanding that God needs you to be born again to speak the Word. And we went through all those details there. I won't, I won't go backwards. We'll go forwards and continue on in the teaching. Uh, we talked about the definition of foretelling and the definition of foretelling on our last audio taping. Uh, now we're at the point where we're talking about Agabus, and Agabus was a prophet of God. Prophets foretell. They tell about events to come, they, uh, they are shown by God in visions and dreams and catching up in trances and impressions and in words. There's a knobby bubbling up. Uh, there's different ways that the prophet will be told by God what's going on. Each prophet he works with differently. And we're going to get into that more in the later chapters and, and in, in more detail. But right now we're just going to be talking about uh, the, uh, the foretelling ability of a prophet And we're going to take a look at Agabus, a prophet in the book of Acts. Now in Acts 11.28, on page 8 of your manual, if you're following me with the manual, uh, down at the bottom of the page, it says, And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Now the interesting thing here is, uh, I, I look at that and I think, okay, in today's age, you know, who would stand up and say there is going to be a, a drought in the land, a great dearth in the land, and it came to pass? I mean, that's boldness. You must know that you've heard from heaven and that God has spoken to you. And Agabus is a true prophet of God. He wasn't a perfect prophet of God, but he was a true prophet of God. None of us are perfect, but God works with us anyhow. Praise the Lord, everyone. All right. So we see that uh, he spoke the world with boldness and it did come to pass. The word did not drop or it, it dropped in the earth, but it did not become void. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Acts 21 verses 10 to 14, it says, And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And he was come unto us. He took Paul's girdle and bound him hands and feet and said, Thus says the Lord, the Holy Ghost rather, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him, don't go to Jerusalem. Now, so in other words, they knew that uh, Agabus was a prophet and they knew that his words didn't drop. Let's look at verse 13. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am not ready to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And he would not be persuaded. We cease saying the will of the Lord be done. So we see here, uh, here's Paul, great man of God, has just been prophesied by Agabus, whose word comes to pass, is a known prophet of God with a standing record and says, uh, you know, no, I'm going. This is what I know I'm to do. God will warn him, but he went anyways. Hallelujah. You know, there are times and seasons in life and ministry that you need to do what you need to do, even in the midst of challenges, because you know God has spoken to you. And you know that even though warned, you must do it. And uh, that's, that's a sign of maturity. I mean, yes, people will warn you, but uh, there are some things you have, to, you have to do what you have to do, because you know people's lives are, are at stake regarding these things. And, uh, you know, there's many times that 
we travel to distant countries to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we, we do it because we love people and we want them saved. Hallelujah. Well, let's move on here. Changing of the prophets. Hallelujah. Well, the changing of the prophets from the Old Testament, the New Testament is very profound. And we need to really take a look at this because there's truly a difference between an Old Testament prophet and a New Testament prophet. An Old Testament prophet, the spirit of the Lord came upon them. In the New Testament, the spirit of the Lord lives within them and comes upon them. There's a greater dispensation of grace and it's, it's an amazing operation. Hallelujah. Let me read what I've got written here. Old Testament prophets had the spirit of God upon them and operated differently because the mandate given them is different. Secondly, they were operating in a different dispensation. We are operating in the dispensation of grace. True enough. The Old Testament prophets were for foretelling of calamities to come and convicting people of their sin and telling them time and time again to repent and return to God. God gave them words, but it was from outside. And because Christ had not come as yet, and they were not born again, they could not have the Holy Spirit within them. In Ezekiel 37, we see how God taught uh, Ezekiel, the prophet, how to foretell and forth, foretell rather and call life out of dead situations. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to speak forth life in dark situations. Hallelujah. Now, I have a warning post here, and I want to read this to you, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Hallelujah. There are many born-again New Testament believers who feel it is their job to be critical, mean, cranky people who tell people all that they have done wrong in front of others and call themselves prophets. This is not the role of a New Testament prophet. Let me say that again. This is not the role of a New Testament. Testament prophets, glory to God. You know, even when David made mistakes, Nathan came to him in the quiet of his room and spoke to him about an issue. You know, it's not about embarrassing people. And I'm going to just stop for a minute and talk about something that's been on my heart. When you prophesy, you prophesy out of love. The love of God constrains you, guides you, and leads you. Now, I'm not saying that we don't correct people. That is usually done in private, in a private situation, not in a public situation. And really, the people have gotten off course. And the compassion, the mercy, the grace, the love of God has not been operating in them as it should be in these situations. Because people have gone through some stuff. And there's reasons why people have done things or gotten off a track. And it's not everyone's business, but it's God's business to help them get corrected and back on track to do the will of God in their life. And uh, so, you know, I am not for cranky prophets, not for cranky prophets. You know, there's a time and a place for it. And, and that's key. There's a time and a place for it. And usually if God is showing you something that needs correction in somebody's life, by all means, get on your knees and pray for that person. That's probably your biggest job to do is to pray and see God's face, that their life would turn around, that God would be glorified and uh, he would be exalted in their life and their life would be brought back on course. Glory to God. Well, let's continue. A New Testament prophet is one who may be told by God by diverse means about another sin or challenges. Hallelujah. As I said, the Holy Spirit wants you to pray for them. Glory to God. And even if you're an intercessor, you're a prophetic person, you're not a prophet, you're a prophetic person and you're seeing stuff and you're hearing stuff. God trusts you enough to keep your mouth shut and go in prayer privately on your own, not with a group of people, on your own. He trusts you. He didn't tell a group. He told you to go and pray. And that's what you need to do. Go and pray. Seek God's face in a private place. Hallelujah. That's important. I trust you all grab a hold of that one. And grab a hold of it with love because our, you know, it's a labor of love. Being in ministry, being born again, everything that we do, we labor in God's love to bring his goodness about in our lives and the lives of others. 
if we can grab a hold of that one nugget and allow that to sink into our toes, glory to God. We will be amazing people on there. We will glorify God. We will make his name great in the earth. I like that. I think that's exciting. Hallelujah. Well, let me talk about some different types of prophets that there are on the earth. We have artistic prophets. They are like psalmists, minstrel prophets, like David. You know, they write songs. They sing in song. They prophesy in song. They can pick up an instrument, and the instrument will prophesy. Glory to God. It will break the ground. Sometimes, you know, we, we think we need to speak a word. And actually, it's just a, a you know, a musical instrument will break the bars of iron in people's life. Hallelujah. We know that with David and Saul, David would play the harp. And what would happen? Saul would, the spirit that was vexing him all the time, would leave him. Hallelujah. We also know that there's times when Saul would try to throw a, pro, uh, uh, a spear at David and try to kill him. But uh, <laughs> that's another story for another day. Um, what I'm saying is they are artistic prophets. And uh, these are minstrels. And they have the song of the Lord. They'll, they'll hear from heaven. And as they're singing, words will come to them. And a song will come to them. I call it the eighth note, the note from heaven. The note that drops into your soul and it comes forth and there's a singing that goes forth. It is a, uh, the song of the Lord that comes forth out of them. Many um, minstrels and uh, uh, singers, these people, they have the ability to pick up what's happening in heaven and bring it to earth for the now moments of God Hallelujah, where the presence of God is so thick and so rich and so heavenly. It's just an amazing thing to see. I've seen a few people do it really well. And uh, it's something to behold. It's a wonder and a sign. And when the uh, congregation joins in and grabs a hold of that song of the Lord and sings and worships and enters in with the prophet, with the minstrel, Great shifts in the earth come about. It's amazing what happens. Amen. The song of the Lord is amazing. And you know, I've even heard the cymbals and the drums prophesy. And as they crash, they're breaking barriers and limitations and strongholds and demonic influences off of the lives of people and even in territories and situations. And lives are changed and transformed. It is amazing. Hallelujah. God is so amazing. You know, music is, is the sound of heaven. Music, hallelujah. The worship, the worship that goes on in heaven, just, oh, it is awesome. It is awesome. Praise God. Well, let's talk about uh, and the next type of prophets, Nabi prophets. They prophesy from the bobbling up of the word inside of them. Peter and Nathan were examples of this. From the inspiration they prophesied. It's just like it's kind of bubbles on the inside of you. And all of a sudden these words come out. It, it kind of starts something like, uh, you may have a one word. Uh, let me give you an example. The Holy Spirit asked me to go to the mall about a couple months ago. And I went to the mall. And he says, I, I want, you're going to prophesy to everyone with a cobalt blue t-shirt on them. I'm going to have a word for each and every one of them. I want to show you something. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do this in boldness. And by our faith, we operate. And I thought, all right, let's do this. So and I thought, oh, good, there won't be too many cobalt T-shirt people. This is going to be easy. And all of a sudden, I walked into the food court at the mall where I live, and there was I just saw blue cobalt T-shirts everywhere. And I kind of went, okay, well, let's do this. Well, I went one by one to different people, and um I would start out saying that the Lord is going to do something amazing in your life in this next month. That was the word I had to give them. And then all of a sudden, there would be a bubbling up and there would be words that would come for each of these people. And you know what? These people, they had tears in their eyes and they hugged me and they said, thank you. And they were so appreciative and God touched their hearts so amazingly. It was wonderful. 
Well, I had, I had so much fun the first time I did that. I thought, oh, this is awesome. This is great. And second person, this is even better. I was on a roll, you know, and then I started getting like one words with certain people and, and uh, I gave them the one words. And then I got, I was sitting there for a minute and I saw this other person with a blue cobalt blue t-shirt on and I'm looking and I hear this word dog. That's all I hear. I get the word dog. I don't see a picture of a dog. I, you know, just the impression of the word dog. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't really want to go over there. So then starts the argument between me and God, and you know who's going to win, um, about the dog. And uh, I said, I can't go over there and say dog. Yes, you can. You need to go over there and say dog. Well, I don't, you know, it was back and forth, back and forth. And so I finally, you know, picked myself up and got myself over to this group of people that says, excuse me, I, I, I'm sitting here in the, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a pastor and uh, the Lord has a word for, for you and it's to do with a dog. Do you have a dog? Does anyone have a dog? And the, the, the mother that, who was there with them says, yes, I have a dog. I says, well, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. And the woman burst into tears. And her, her, hmm. and the dog had, you know, had had surgery, uh, uh, some sort of leg injury or some sort of injury, and was healing. And I gather she was very concerned. And they were all so grateful and so thankful. So was I. Uh, but God released that word, and it was so wonderful, you know. But I had, it took a lot of boldness to do that, you know. It took a lot of boldness to go over there and say, okay, this is the word for you now. And that's how the knob, it was a word that I was just giving a word, and then it started to bubble up and come forth. And, you know, when you do it from, you do it from love, faith works by love. And the love constrains you and guides you and leads you to prophesy, to let the word bubble up and out of you. Hallelujah. And uh, so those are Nabi prophets. Nabi prophets operate that in a lot. That's an area where they do a lot. A Shama prophet, number three. Let's look at a Shama prophet. They are intercessors that see in the spirit and shoot down Jezebel spirits and any other spirits that come around. Hallelujah. Jeremiah is a Shama prophet. In Jeremiah 17, 28, it talks about that. Jehu was also this type of prophet. They are tough, bold, amazing intercessors. And I'm going to tell you right now, in my ministry, I have a Shama prophet. Her name is uh, is uh, Prophet Norma, and she is amazing. She is she is like full guns behind this ministry. I just love her to pieces. I'm just blessed by her. She is taking care of business, and she does it on a daily basis. She's got, you know, it's like uh, this amazing woman who is got your back, you know, got the ministry's back, got the people in the ministry's back, and she sees stuff, and she just calls it out and shoots it down in the spirit and does, uh, deals with it. You know, you just, it's quite funny, quite funny. She's really amazing. Um, she's a mighty woman of God and she's a blessing to this ministry. There's a shout out to you, Norma. God bless you richly. Hallelujah. Well, number four is our executive prophets and apostles. Elijah and Daniel were examples of this type of the apostolic and they were prophets at that same time. And, you know, I, I'm, I just want to encourage you. I know that um, there are no apostles in the Old Testament, but they were apostolic type and prophetic. And they were uh, like, and Daniel was, you know, over the lands. Elijah was over the lands. These are national prophets. These are uh, prophets of prophets. Um, they're, uh, they oversee things that are amazing. Um, hallelujah. Joseph was like that. Amen. Joseph oversaw stuff and he, um, he saw many things. It's amazing how, how they make that difference. So an executive prophet or national prophets, they see nations, they speak to nations. Um, when they speak, things change in nations. Glory to God. Where God shows, you, shows things about nations and warns the people about things in nations too. Okay, number five, seer prophets. These are prophets who, who don't just prophesy from inspiration, 
but they see stuff. They go into visions, open visions, closed visions, and open vision is uh, when you actually see it like everything changes around you and becomes real right in front of you. Uh, a, closed, a closed vision is, uh, you know, when you see in the spirit. Um, hallelujah. Praise God. I remember one time um, seeing a person that really wasn't there. And uh, it was after an event, and I had come in, and our service was going to start. And I saw that person, and I thought, wow, why are you there? And I got a wave, and I thought, okay, that's cool. And then I... I uh, I realized that that person actually was not in the building and that person actually was in another city. And I double-checked with the senior pastor at that time and he said, yeah, and then I told him what I saw. And the interpretation of God is, you know, God comes in the form of another man, right? He comes in another form. And he came in the form of someone I knew as a friend and sort of was just acknowledging the, what I had uh, done at the last meeting I attended prior to coming. And I thought, that was so cool. And that was a, you know, open vision. That was like the person was standing there. And, uh, and I went around the corner and came back, and they were gone. It was just amazing. But that happens to a lot of, you know, seers and prophets who can see stuff like that. And we praise God uh, because he's doing that for a reason, you know, um, uh, there's always a reason for what God does, and uh, it isn't for our personal um, epitoire or whatever. It is, it is about really um, allowing you to see and to perceive and understand that, you know, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. Glory to God. Uh, it can happen to anyone. Just, just open your heart. And ask, you know, uh, we don't go, I didn't, wasn't in the process of going and looking for things, but I also was always seeking after Jesus. I was seeking after his word, seeking after him. And that brings me to your ne our next point. In the New Testament, Jesus, when he walked on the earth in the four gospels, you will see him as the chief apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So if you are looking at any of these offices and trying to figure out where you fit if you're in the fivefold or want to understand the fivefold better, go look to Jesus in the New Testament, see him in the Gospels, and see him operating in those gifting, in those parts of who he is. I don't think giftings is really the right word. Um, but it was who he was. And if you're, if you're called to be an, an apostle, then you look at Jesus, the apostle, and how did he operate? I mean, Elijah was great. You know, um, uh, Daniel was wonderful. But we had God in the earth, and we we're born after his likeness and image. And he abides within us. He is our greatest example of how we're supposed to move and operate in the now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I really want to encourage you that when you go through the Gospels and you're looking at the office of a prophet or a prophetic people, look to Jesus and see how we operate. Then go to the book of Acts and go through and watch how they operated. Amen. They operated in love, in compassion, and in mercy. Glory to God. And that's how you and I are to operate as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Ezekiel 37 is something we do need to take a look at. And I think we'll leave that till next week. I'm going to say, God bless you. And Father, I just pray for everyone who's hearing these words, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You're opening them up for your best, for your best, oh God to be revealed in them and through them. Lord, let them operate through the heartbeat of your love. Let them see with the eyes of love, smell, taste, touch, hear, know with the heart of love, your love, agape love, compassionate, merciful, glorious love. And let their lives be transformed everywhere they go. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing through this course. And may their lives 
never be the same. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. For booking Rev. Adams' prayer requests or more information regarding our ministries, please visit our website at www.crystalwaters.ca. Message us at info at crystalwaters.ca by phone at 1-778-285-1111. Post Office Box 52562, Coquitlam Center, Coquitlam, B.C., V3B 7J4.